So let me mention this because in the names of the codes, sometimes you hear URQMD or DBUU or TUQMD or just BUU. Uh, so both BUU and QMD are actual terms. BUU means Boltzmann Ulling Ullenbach. Uh, and uh, it means that you are solving Boltzmann equation. But Ulling and Ullenbach uh, are relativistic extensions. Uh, Boltzmann originally wrote his equations non relativistically, and U and U uh, are for relativistic extension. Um, and then there is a QMD approach. Um, the essential difference between these two approaches is in the way you treat potentials. So the treatment of collisions in the right part is the same or can be the same. It doesn't really affect the title if it's going to be BU or QMD. What's really important is the way you are treating potentials. In BUU, your potentials depend on the local density. So to calculate the potential, you compute the local density, and then potential depends on this local density. In QMD approach, potential depends on the pairwise coordinates. If you think of the third Newton's law, the third Newton's law uh, relies on the fact that potentials depend on coordinates. So in boltzmann uhling ullenberg approach, third Newton's law is not really working. And that means that you only have precise energy and momentum conservation only in the limit when the number of test particles is approaching infinity. Uh, if when you actually reproduce the whole distribution function very precisely. This is not exactly happening in practice. So in BU approaches, you have um, slight but always energy and momentum violations. And in the limit of n test to infinity, BU approach is solving Boltzmann equation. In QMD approach, you don't really know exactly what you are solving, uh, but you are conserving energy and momentum. You are solving just equations of motion and you are not really solving Boltzmann equation. But your energy and momentum are conserved exactly event by event. Now this difference between BU and QMD only matters when you have mean field potentials. If you don't have mean field potentials, it doesn't really matter whether you are using BUU or QMD. And in Jetscape, SMASH is used without mean field potentials. Although in principle, mean field potentials can be switched on. So it doesn't really matter if it is BUU or QMD. However, SMASH is mostly following BUU approach. It is not exactly conserving energy and momentum. However, uh, it is solving Boltzmann equation. Uh, now, one particular difference between transport codes uh, is also the collision criterion. Now, let's speak about collisions. Um, most of the codes would use geometrical criterion. It means that if particles come sufficiently close to each other, uh, they will collide. It is deterministic. So, there is no quantum mechanics there. In, in general, in transport codes, you don't have interference. Uh, and if you use geometric collision criterion, then, um, then it is deterministic whether particles collide or not. Geometrical criterion also means that you can have only two to two particle collisions, but not three to two, because how exactly would you do three particle collision with geometrical criterion? Mm. So for three to two reactions and three to one reactions, in many codes, you would have detailed balance violations because you have uh, one particle to three particles decay, but not three to one reaction. It is not true in SMASH. In SMASH, actually, the tail balance is fulfilled for all, hadron, uh, for all hadronic reactions because we implement three to two and three to one through two to two reactions. Then, um, with the geometrical criteria, criterion approach, the distance dij is Lorentz invariant. So here is everything is fine with the Lorentz invariance. It is Lorentz invariant because it is calculated in the center of mass frame of colliding particles. However, the time of collision is not Lorentz invariant. The time is the time of the closest approach in the computational frame. And computational frame can be the left frame, center of mass frame, or any other frame of your choice. And 
in transport codes, collisions are happening after sorting by time. So you find a lot of collisions, a lot of potential collisions, I would say, and sort them by time, perform the earliest, and if in some later collisions there are particles that, that are already not there, then you cannot perform it. And this sorting by time is not exactly Lorentz invariant. It depends on the frame. Uh, because this time of closest approach depends on the frame. And it means that Lorentz invariance is not exact with geometrical criterion. Uh, how people live with this, um, we just test that in different frames we get um, essentially the same results and then it's fine. And it's not always fine, so there is some slightly improved Kodama criterion where there are smaller Lorentz invariance troubles. Okay, this was geometrical criterion. There is also a different way to approach collisions. Instead of treating them deterministically, there is a stochastic way. You just take the cell, choose two random particles, and say these particles are going to collide with some probabilities, and then you calculate the appropriate probability. In this way, you can do everything completely Lorentz invariant. Uh, this allows three to two collisions and three to one collisions. And Unfortunately, it's not exactly applicable with, with the QMD model because then you have to treat it with the cells. And it also needs some care. But um, in general, I would say the stochastic rates method is superior to geometrical criterion. And I have here planned in Smash, it is already implemented on one of the branches. So it's not just planned, it's actually being implemented right now. However, stochastic rates, you cannot really simulate proton-proton collisions, for example. You, because you need the cells. So stochastic rates doesn't really work for proton-proton collisions. You need heavy ions. And one more thing for transport codes. Um, at higher energies, if you, have if you have to collide proton with proton, uh, and the energy of collision is already higher than, let's say, 3 or 4 GeV. Uh, I was previously talking about hadronic collisions and specifically about two to two hadronic collisions. But now if you collide two proton at higher energies, you usually produce more than just two particles. You can produce five pions, you can produce 10 pions, you can produce 20 pions. And this is done uh, using string fragmentation models. And you most probably heard about Pythia. There are also Fritjof and Hervig. Mm, and transport codes such as Smash and others just unavoidably use one of the stream models for higher energy collisions. So, okay, now, um, yeah, I, I guess I make a little pause here. Uh, now I'm going to talk specifically about Smash. Well, now I finished about the theory and practice part of hadronic codes. Uh, Smash.